This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Fine Print podcast on Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Open phones at 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Anne's going to start off this hour in Austin. Ooh, I better put that right. Jumping around here. And there she is. Anne is in Austin, Texas to start off this hour. Hey, Anne, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Cool. So I see on my screen that George challenged you to do something. What have we gotten ourselves into here? Well, I had a credit card question, and I knew he was going to chew me out for using them, but I didn't I, I, chew it was you a out. question that so, did he? Did he really? Did he really chew you out? I'm not capable. <laughs> no. Okay. Good. Well, he gave me he gave me a good lecture. He gave you stern warning. I knew he warning. was going to do yeah. that. Okay. But it was but it was like something that had bugged me. I don't remember even what it was now, but he was kind enough to take some extra time with me and give me a challenge to try to live a month without them. And you did it. And. Well, I did it because he asked me to. I didn't do it because I was convinced it would work. Ah, but, but you're willing to, <laughs> yeah. to play along. Okay, so you well, went a month nice, with yes. no credit card use. I, I take it you used a debit card. No, no. I used cash, and I ordered a, a debit card. Oh, cool. Okay. So no plastic transactions for a month. Yes. Wow, and I'm impressed. Survived. That's hardcore. Okay. So tell us about it. What happened? Well, what happened was I I was a little bit scared, actually, because I realized I was going to have to pay for my credit cards that I'd used last month and take care of my expenses for this month all at one time. Mm. And I go, hmm, well, this may be interesting. And you know what happened? I got this little feeling or something i don't know whether i don't know what it was but i just felt this wind between uh, under my wings and i went i can do this i could do it so i decided i was going to do it and i was going to do it right okay so yeah so i took the i just i just i just jumped into it right away and you know what the strangest things happened first of all when I went to the grocery store, I didn't look left or right because I know these are professional people that are trying to distract me. That's right. And I'm not a professional in this area, so I need to not be tempted. And I also gave myself 10 minutes to be in the grocery store and out. Wow, because you were using your own money. You got it. And you have to peel it off like you're like you're bleeding or something to give it to them. Or you can just flash them a card. When you hand it over that cash, it hurt. Because you, you it left with less It not only hurt, but it surprised cash. me. It was even better than that. When I gave her the money, she gave me change. And you were like, I forgot that you can get change. <laughs> it just changed. I had it in my hand. I go, what do I do with this? Wow. It was it was So you, you spent so less money. My, You're telling us that you spent less money because you used cash. If you don't put anything in your buggy, buggy you don't have much to pay for. What a concept. <laughs> so you're saying when you use a credit card, it was like supermarket sweep. You were just filling up that card as fast as you could, and it felt like you were getting it all for free. And I was doing a good job, too. <laughs> Oh, and you're yeah. hilarious. Well, thank you for humoring us and doing this experiment. So, has it changed? Are you going to go back to credit cards? <laughs> well, my dog had to go to the vet this month, and I hadn't expected that that bill. And I, I was I was a little bit concerned, but I paid for it out of the change that was in my purse. Now, 
I'd gotten a focus that I hadn't had for a long time. So did you keep had, track, Anne, of how much you saved by using cash, using your own money? I didn't have time. I was putting money in my purse so often. I didn't have time to keep the records, but I can now. Oh, that's that's an awesome experiment. So it sounds like you've realized the power of using your own money, of using cash. It, you make decisions differently. That was my whole point with you doing this experiment. Exactly. I, I understood it, and I appreciate the fact that I know you can't give a, a challenge to everyone, not individually, but I appreciate that you did it for me. You did exactly what I needed, exactly when I needed it. I love Thank that, you. Ann. Thank you for the call. That is so cool. I hope all of America takes the challenge. One month without credit cards and see how it changes the way that you spend. But she actually went further than you asked her to. Yeah. You, you said get a debit card, and she hadn't even gotten it yet. So she does a pure cash month, no plastic at Which all. Which is the best. I mean, that'll really make you feel yeah, the pain. Yeah, I mean, you want to get pissed off about filling up your car? Try walking all the way into the market and laying down Uncle Benjamin Franklin a couple of times after you paid it off. Now you're really getting political. That'll get you political right there. That'll get you angry. Calling your senators after that one. Angry. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, Dave, you've been dealing with this for 30 years now. This whole argument of you spend more on a credit card, you make decisions differently when you use other people's money, and it affects you negatively for your financial future. Yeah, the, there's tons of studies that show that the pain centers of the brain are activated when you spend cash. It, it literally hurts. Mm. And when you spend with a card, even a debit card, it's just like no brain activity. No brain, but no brain activity, right? So, uh, but the, you know, no, that's all kidding aside, there, there's, you know, total day. And Rachel brought us something many, many years ago, and I hadn't ever thought about it, even though I'd been teaching by then this whole idea for decades. When, when you're a kid and you have a toy and your friend wants a toy and you trade, you give him your toy and there's a, there's a visual transaction. I hand you one, you hand it back, you hand me yours, right? With a purchase, you're taking something and you give them your money and they keep your money and you keep their thing. Just like a trade. It's greenbacks for stuff. You see a trade. When you are purchasing something with plastic, you take their stuff, hand them your plastic, and they hand it back to you. You leave with both things. So now, that, seems, that seems a little bit childish when you think about it. But you know what? There's no trade. There's no transaction here because I'm getting both things, the thing I came for and the thing I came in with. Yeah. I leave with the plastic and the thing. When I use money... I don't leave with the money. Yeah. I just leave with the thing. And there's something visually that happens inside of our brains there that affects our emotions, affects our spirit, and it lowers the fact that we realize we just spent money. I think that's what's happening in Congress. Oh, my goodness, yes. And it's really hard to go into debt when you don't have the option to because your bank account said empty. But it's easy when you've got the lenders going, we'll happily give you as much money as you'd like. Card denied when you have a debit card typically means you don't have the money. It's a whole idea. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information.
Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. We get it, folks. When you're worried about money, it's overwhelming. It's all-consuming. Money worries are some of the worst forms of anxiety that Dr. John Deloney deals with. Um, if you don't have enough to pay your bills, you get that little sweat in your palms and right above your lip and right above your eyes and always in your checkbook. It's always on your mind. But you shouldn't have to live with that kind of stress. You work too hard to live like that. And good news is you don't have to. If you follow a proven plan, you'll discover peace with your money. That's why we call it Financial Peace University. And we'll show you the same plan that's helped almost 10 million people learn how to get on a budget, save, get out of debt, spend wisely, build wealth, be outrageously generous. In short, how to handle money right. And it's a great time to take the course. We just updated a ton of the content. It's Rachel Cruz, me, and new stuff with George Camel and Dr. John Deloney. Yeah, the course is the best it's ever been right now. So decide, decide today that you are done letting money stress rule your life. Listen, I can't make inflation go away, and I can't fix recessions, but I can show you how to weather the storm. I can show you how to prosper in good times and in bad times. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash FPU, RamseySolutions.com, FPU, Financial Peace University. Bridget's in Midland, Texas. Hi, Bridget. How are you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, so I was wondering if I should take out a mortgage and buy a house or um, continue working and save up um, and just pay for pay cash for a house. My ultimate goal is to go to a CRNA school, which is a three-year program. And um, I, I'm not able to work during that time because it's a very rigid program. And uh, so here are my numbers. Um, I'm single with no kids. I'm 27 years old. I, I'm an RN and I travel for work. I have an income of so far because my, my income varies uh, depending on the contract that I have. So right now, um, so far, I have uh, 137000 so far. Uh, my emergency fund is, is uh, already done. It's, I have it there. Um, I'm debt-free. I have no student loans, no car loans. I just have my rent plus my bills. How much I is have your rent? 1100 And C- CRNA schools, how long? Two years? Three years. Three years. And what's it cost a year? Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking it up, and it said a total of um, 100000 A total at mm-hmm. one particular school? Yeah, this is in Houston, yeah. Yeah, okay, so 100000 in tuition and books, or does that include living expenses? Uh, with living expenses as well. Really? You only need $100,000, mm-hmm. and you make 137000 and you're single? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my savings is um, eighty four thousand dollars. I mean, eighty four, yeah, thousand dollars. And um, you have eighty four thousand dollars already saved. Yes. Wow. Okay, so what's the deal? Go to school. I mean, you work six more well, months and then go to school. What does the house have to do with this? Um, because uh, I don't want to go to school yet. I'm still because I'm raising my little brother and he's still in school. So I have to wait for him to get um, to go to college, which should be in about seven years. So in the meantime, I'm taking care of him, and um, I just want to buy a house and you know build equity. And with the money that I have, I don't have to get take out loans. And because um, my ultimate goal is to sell this house, live in Houston, and not having to pay rent, just the bills. And with whatever money left I have, just pay you know bills and tuition and all of that. So this is a 10-year journey? You said seven more years plus three? Stop stop a second. Your little brother is seven years old? No, he's 12. He's 12. So seven more years he'll Mm -hmm. be gone, you're saying, okay. Right, yeah. Man, you're amazing. You took on the raising of your little brother. What happened to your parents? Um, My dad is just not in the picture, and our mom passed away uh, about five years ago. Mm. Man, you're amazing. Okay, so who takes mm-hmm. care of your little brother now? He goes to school during the day, mm-hmm. and you have, well, like after school, you have, like, after-school care? Uh, no, my sister has been helping me out with him when I travel um, and go on my contracts, and then when I come back, I— How long uh, are you on a contract? 
Uh, it depends. So when COVID was at its peak, I was doing like eight week contracts. Yeah. Uh, 13 what do, what, contracts. Where is your sister in Midland as well? Yes, we live together. So that's why my my rent is a little high because I rent a three bedroom. Yeah. And two what does your sister do for a well. living? Um, right now, she just got separated from her baby daddy, and um, so she's just helping with raising the kids because she's got three kids on her own. Um, she's about to go to school full time this upcoming fall, and um, that's where we're at right now. How old is she? And she's twenty three. So you're the mama of this whole bunch, aren't you? Yeah. Um, you know what would work? Since you're com- since you're committed to this plan, load up the mm-hmm. whole bunch and go to Houston now. And take everybody. Yeah, and and you know, well, within six months, you don't do it right now. Uh, your sister's mm-hmm. not working, so right. she can land where you tell her to if you're taking care of her right. too. And she's mm-hmm. going to start school. Well, she can start school in Houston as easy as she can in Midland. If Houston's where you can get your CRNA, mm-hmm. but um. If you can save up enough to take care of, you're saying that the hundred thousand will cover your living expenses, including your rent, right? Well, my rent will be paid off. I was thinking, you know, with no, you're not going to pay off the house savings. and go to CRNA. You don't have the money. Mm-hmm. You only got a hundred thousand. You need a hundred thousand right. for school. That leaves zip for a, a house. Do you own the house you're in? No, I rent. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. I'm trying to keep you from having to put your life on hold for the responsibility that you took on for your brother and your sister. And that's kind of why I'm thinking I'm taking them all to Houston. Sister can take care of her kids and little brother while you go to school. In return, you help mm-hmm. support them and take care of them, which is what you've done. And you could execute that next spring. Next spring? Yeah. I mean, because you can probably save another 50 grand by spring, can't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do. And then the house gets And that way it's not a seven-year plan. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you were this boy's mama, you would not put your life on hold as his mama. And you're playing mama now. You've taken over the care of him. You would go ahead and figure out a way to go to school, and you'd take him with you and go to school. And the only thing is, who's taking care of him now? Sister, well, you're taking care of her. So that's a fair trade. She can just load up and go with you. I, I'm going to save another fifty grand or more by next spring, and then I'm going to school and take them all with you. They don't really have a say in the matter. You're the one taking care of everybody. They're going to go where you tell them to. They're under your roof. And I would put the, the house on pause at that point. And yeah, let's get you don't need to school. buy a house. You need to go to school. Because that's going to increase your income as well, which is only going to help yeah. later on with the house purchase. Yeah. And then when you finish school in three years and your sister has finished school in three years and she can get out on her own, become sustainable, your little brother will almost be there. And then we can start talking about buying a house at that point. And I don't know what will happen in your personal life during that period of time either. Uh, hopefully your entire personal life won't be on hold. You're, you're an amazing young woman. You have taken on a tremendous responsibility with a big heart. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being that kind of person. That little boy uh, has a hero in his life, and it's his older sister. And so, uh, however, I think there's a way you can manipulate these facts tactically to not have to put your life on hold for seven years. I think I think we just, you know, we do what we all do with our kids. We drag them through the adventure. They go along for the adventure. That's how the kiddo thing works. And, um, yeah, I think I would. Wow, what an interesting situation, and what a beautiful woman. Yeah. Man, I mean. It's impressive. She's making bank. She's working her tail off. Taking care of the family. And everybody can depend on her because she's that kind of gal. Way to go, Bridget. This is The Ramsey Show.
Still on baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Come by and visit Ramsey Solutions if you're in the Nashville area. We've got a huge lobby and visitor center, free coffee, free homemade chocolate chip cookies that are from the devil. And um, their temptation is unbelievable. And, Keep uh, blaming the devil, Dave. Yeah, well, you got to blame somebody. You can't blame myself because I must be a victim of something. So, uh, like my own sweet tooth or something. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. We do the show every day from 1 to 4 Central. And you can come and watch us do the show. I'm not sure exactly why that's exciting, but people do it all the time. And it's free, so you, can, you can't really argue about the price. And in that lobby is a debt-free stage that Michael and Julie are on. Hey, guys, how are you? We're good, Dave. How are you? Welcome. Where do you all live? <laughs> so we live in Estacada, Oregon. It's outside of uh, Portland, Oregon. Oh, wow. That's a bit of a haul to Nashville. How much debt have you paid off? We paid off $136,397. Way to go. How long did this take? Uh, two years, eight months. All right. And what was your range of income during that we, two years and eight months? We started out at 172, went up to 264, and then down to 257. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? So I retired out of the Department of Homeland Security in Portland uh, wow. a year ago. I was at the writing. Wow. And uh, since we own a medical clinic together, I'm now the medical administrator, and Julie is the medical director. Oh, cool. very cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm a family nurse practitioner, medical director of an integrative primary care clinic. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Sharp wow. couple. Good, good, good. Well, welcome. What kind of debt was the 136000 Oh, Dave, we had a little bit of everything. We started out with a, a, um, a retirement loan. We had a addition loan. We bought a home. It was probably way over what we should have done. We had two lines of credit to keep our business open. Um, we had a Parent PLUS loan. We had a second mortgage. And we had two credit cards for Alaska. My Lord, y'all were normal. Wow. It was a you lot. You were completely normal. Oh, my gosh. And you paid every bit of that off. Yes. Including your house? No. Oh, everything but the house. Okay. Everything but the house. Good, wow. good. Two years and eight months. That's pretty intense. It was a lot, Dave. We... When we started two years, eight months ago, we had a uh, met with a lawyer whether we should close on the business and go bankrupt. Wow. So. And you turned it completely around. Yeah, now the business is worth 300000 <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when that happens. I <laughs> way to go, you guys. Okay, so we're trying to figure out if this thing's belly up. You retire, jump in with both feet, and, of course, Julie's already got the thing running. You kick it in the tail, make it go. Yes. And you made some serious money. Yes. During that time, uh, which is great. You turned the business around. But in, in the midst of that, you also say we're getting out of debt because we don't want to be here again. No, never. We, so what we, initiated that part of this journey? Dave, we were Davish. We'd done it once before, 2009, and then we've, I'm addicted to debt. So I've, we've started bad habits again. And so, Julie, it really is his fault. Yes. Not so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had the belief that, you know, I always paid my bills, um, but I never really knew how to save. Uh. And so when we hit a issue with the business, um, a, a contract pulled out with the state uh. and I lost about 50% of our income. So Ooh. I had a lot of hard conversations with the medical providers uh. and um, with our family too. Um, so a lot of humility and surrender. So. Uh, yeah, that's tough. That's a hard. That's a hard uh, corner to turn. And uh, the fact that you did it, it there, there's a lot of stress in the last two years. Yeah. yeah. What were those sacrifices like you guys made where you decided we're not going to be in this position again? Well, we we met with a Ramsey certified coach. Um, really encouraged us. Me, a Igorov, shout mm-hmm. out to you. Yeah. We had joined FPO, but uh, we, we started. Uh, our diff returnee, we got a thousand dollars, and immediately the transmission went out on our VW. Of course. And then uh, at the very end of it, uh, the transmission went out on my '88 Chevy. Your '88 Chevy. Chevy? <laughs> still driving it. I guess it was about time. Yeah, yeah. it's still going. It. Yep. That, that car right there is a classic, man. Yeah, I love it. 
A two-tone 88 pickup. Yep. Man, that's a beast. I love it. Well, I'm sorry it didn't live. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's back up and running. It's got a new engine, new transmission. Oh, you fixed it, it all up. It kept it alive. Yep, it will not die. Wow, this is awesome. A second life, the zombie truck lives. <laughs> wow. Well, it's cheaper than buying a oh, truck yeah. now. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, anything cheaper than buying Because we're still working it. on our, um, what is it, the three months of savings. Yeah, yeah. So we're almost there. And yeah. And we're, we're aiming to pay off the house in the next five to six years. Wow. And you'll have $100,000 in retained earnings sitting over in the business one of these days. So yes. if you ever hit another little bump, it won't, it won't be a bump. It won't tank you. Yeah, liquid cash there, too, of course. Way to go, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. How's it feel? Um, I still feel like an avalanche is behind me, mm. but um, I have a lot more tools now. And um, humil- I said humility and just keeping our sights on our goals and... Um, leaning into our relationships with God. So. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Dave. Amen. And you went through a lot with your career change as well, because like you said, you were in the middle of all the protests and the, the violence and everything else, and you step aside from that and walk into a whole different kind of violence. Yep. And then uh, 15,000 clinics like ours closed during the pandemic. So we kept it open, and I credit Julie for that. Man. Yeah, so I feel stronger about leading the clinic than I ever have before. Uh, and so we went from bankruptcy card given to us to, um, was it? 300,000. Net worth millionaires. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> wow. I mean, that occurred to us in February as we we're coming into paying this off. It's like we looked at our assets and we went, oh my gosh. Look at that. Who knew? Yeah. We thought we were just surviving and here we ended up. <laughs> you know, that's what happens when you do something like this. So well done, y'all. Proud of you guys. Very well played. What a turnaround. All right, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Uh, Yeah, keep your sights on the goal Uh, and work hard. (laughs) Change your mindset. You can do it. Um, We're proof. You know, I'm 53. uh, Julie's 52. So if we're going to do it at our stage, um, do it earlier. I'd really recommend that. Yeah. We could have done this a lot sooner. Yeah, I hear you. But we have hope for the future now in our retirement. Good. Good. That's why we're here. I'm glad we helped. Good Thank for you. y'all. Well done. You're heroes. Excellent, excellent job. Got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you because you've just become one. There you go. Thank you. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody who's scared and struggling like you were. You can show them a, a light at the end of the tunnel and a, a one-year membership to Financial Peace University with the new videos with George and Dr. John Deloney and Rachel Cruz and me. Best F- FPU we've ever done right now out there. So uh, get you signed up for every bit of that. Congratulations, you two. Very, very proud of you. You're amazing. Thank you. That's quite a journey you've been on. Wow. Quite a lot of tra- life transition. I mean, just yeah. one thing after another, like, boom, boom, boom. Their kept marriage, getting their business, everything got turned yeah. around. Amazing. Very well done. Michael and Julie, Portland, Oregon, 136000 paid off in two years, eight months, making 172, 264 to 257. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three. Three. Two, one. We're debt free! Yeah! (laughs) I love it. That is fabulous. Man, that's very well done. Very, very well done. If you were Dave Ish, it's not too late to go all in. Well, a Ramsey Ish, Ish on a program that works. It's not going to do with me, but the. I kind of resist that Dave-ish thing, but Ramsey-ish I'll go with because that's our what we all teach here, right? And, and uh, the point is is that uh, the nuances, the detail of the stuff we teach you, if you'll submit to every one of those and do them, the reason those items are there in the baby steps and, and the little things around it, like work with your spouse, like combine your finances, don't try to do like roommate thing and all that stuff. When you do all those things together, you get rid of your whole life policy. It's not a baby step, but you get your term insurance in place, get rid of that ripoff stuff. You know, you, you keep doing all the different little things. It changes everything. And these guys right here, man, what what is hard to uh, listen to in three or four minutes here is with what he went through with his career facing all the violence and everything else and then they finan- they face this financial violence with the state pulling a contract out and almost losing their business and then the two of them come together and he's driving this 88 car i mean this is these are people that have walked through stress so deep you could smell it i mean mm. it's unbelievable and they still killed it very very Inspiring. they're warriors man absolutely very strong very strong this is the ramsey show
George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Our question of the day comes from blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, new promos all the time. It's a great American company. Check them out, blinds.com. Today's question comes from James in California. He says, Dave, out of curiosity, specifically, how did you make your first million after your bankruptcy? Hmm. It's a good qu- I don't even know the story. I'm not sure I do. Take I'll us to, back I'll there, have Dave. to think about it. So this was back in 88? So I filed bankruptcy in September of 88, and what I did after that was I went back to doing real estate deals, only I couldn't uh, buy real estate anymore because I had no credit and no money. So no one and would so lend you money. what I would do is tie up a deal and then sell the contract to another investor that used to be a competitor of mine, but were friends. And so I did, you know... Uh, what you might call a dry flip. In other words, I would sell the contract positions. So I'd go contract for a, a house that's worth 200000 I would contract for it for 110 and sell it to a buddy of mine for 10000 bucks, and he could close on it. He'd have 120 in it, right? It's still $200,000 house. So I was still doing foreclosure deals. I got back to doing six figures in 89. Again, I was back making over 100000 a year doing that. But I had a bunch of IRS debt to clean up because that doesn't bankrupt and a few other things to clean up. And it took about a year and a half, two years to clean that up. So I'm trying to think. I kept doing that. Um, I'm trying to think if I got my net worth to a million again before we started doing financial peace. I might not have. So had you started have. this so business? Actually, the actually starting this business slowed that down because I made less. The first year... I did the fin- I did financial peace. It was called Life After Debt, and I was doing the radio show. The radio show I was losing money. Um, so you I were made, paying I, my, to my do the ta- radio my show. My taxable income was in half. The first, I made one hundred twenty thousand a year before. I made sixty thousand a year after. Wow! First year I opened this business, it, my income went in half. So that slowed it down. So it would have been a couple of years after I got this going. Uh, you know, we're starting to get a little bit of income out of this. Income came on back up over time, of course. Because you started and, selling the original Financial Peace book, and are you doing seminars and, you know, the 13, 15 week, however long it was, Yeah, but we, Sharon and I lived on nothing. Even though we were out of debt by then, I mean, we'd paid off the bankruptcy, we'd paid off the uh, everything. We were completely clear, but we were just done. And so we just lived on nothing and just piled up money. And uh, because we wanted both wanted the security of that margin. And so what the, how did I make my first million? So uh, income and thrift is how I did it. So it was not in the stock market at that point. No, no. I mean, I, well, I had some I had uh, I mean, we had our 401k, not 401k. We had Roth IRAs. Not, they weren't even Roth IRAs in those days. Just IRAs. I had IRAs in those days going kids, college funds going. Um and I'm just chunking money and stuff like that. And in that, um, didn't even have any real estate except our own. Got the house paid off. Uh, so yeah, I was I was probably three or four years into this business before I hit another network. But it was mostly that. earned income from just it was mostly earned and grind income and, and not spending any of it. Yeah, none of it. I mean, we didn't do anything. We we're wow. still driving drunk cars. We were still way past what we teach people to do. We teach you once you get to baby steps three, four, five six or four five six that you can lighten up and save up and buy a car and lighten up save up and go on vacation we didn't we didn't we just piled up at what point were the baby steps developed to where you were you were following them uh post-bankruptcy oh i didn't follow them uh post-bankruptcy because they did i hadn't invented them i mean i hadn't laid all that out when i started teaching when i started learning After the bankruptcy, God's ways of handling money, what the Bible says, and grandma's ways, these basic principles, live on less than you make, always be generous, live on a written plan, um, always be saving and investing, and no debt at all. And those basic five principles, when I started living those out, and I started trying to get other people to live them out, they would start to say, okay, yeah, but where do I start? They but, needed a, but, a clear know, I, I started a little counseling ministry at our church. And I started teaching a Sunday school class on those materials. And people would say, okay, so what do you do first, man? I mean, do you, do you, do you, do you, uh, you do you get out of debt first or do you put money in your, in your retirement first? And, um, you know, but by then I was sure that the bigger blocker, because I'd experienced it personally, was debt. 
that if you could get out of debt, then you don't have any payments. Now you've got money to build net worth, which is what happened to me. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, you know, I got out of debt and with a bankruptcy and then paying off the IRS and the other stuff. Um, and then once all that was cleared, as long as I made money and didn't spend it, I could build net worth. I could build, I could build a pile of money. And that's what I did. And so I, I thought, okay, we got to get people out of debt first. But the paying off the house was too big a thing to put in the early stages because first thing's a thousand dollars right and then pay off the house is the second thing so we separated the house debt from the other debt and put it at the end yeah over in baby step six and we knew that you didn't need to start investing in your 401k until you had an emergency fund because i was running into people all the time that had no money except in their retirement and then they'd get in a pinch and cash out their retirement Mm. And let me tell you, a 401k is a lousy emergency fund because when you cash it out, you get your taxes plus a 10% hit. You know, it's a 30 or 40% hit cashing out your 401k to fix your transmission or to uh, pay the house payment because you got laid off. And, uh, you know, whatever the emergency is, a 401k is a lousy rainy day fund. So funding up the 401k, but I get a match. I know, but you're broke. I don't care if you get a match. You're freaking broke, and you're going to use the 401k when something bad happens because you got no money. So we bet baby step three is invented. Actually, baby step one wasn't there. You were just going, get out of debt, get out of debt. It was get out of debt, do the emergency fund, and and what would happen is as people were working that baby step two, something would come along that was little, like a, a, a tire would blow out or something, or uh, a kid would get sick, and it's a six hundred dollar, seven hundred dollar thing or something, and that little six or seven hundred dollar thing would take all the wind out of their cells, and they quit. They would stop their debt snowball. So we figured out that if we gave them a little bit of breathing room, a starter emergency fund, and baby step one was born. But the original baby steps, when I first started teaching them, there wasn't a thousand. So this dollars. evolved over your experience coaching people, being on well, the radio. Well, not, and- not in twenty five or years, but sure. I mean, but but it evolved over a period of time in the early days of massaging this material and learning how to do it. It evolved. But no, I didn't follow the baby steps. They weren't there. All I knew was I'd read the Bible and it said don't borrow money, and I'd been bankrupt, so I figured out that was the truth, right? So I don't borrow money anymore. Bomb, I'm done, you know. And I always have an emergency fund. Why? Because Sharon will leave if I don't have one. You know, it's that simple. She's not going to be without money again. She. She's had enough of that. Nope. She was terrorized by that. Yeah, she's not going back. So you get, you know, you get the whole security gland issue around the emergency fund. That all pops up. That's such an interesting question, James. Thank yeah. you, in California. Thank you, you Dave. Because think- I hadn't even thought about it. I never thought about where the first million came from. Um, and, and then, uh, I, and then, you know, fast forward several years. I had a lot of money by then, and 2008 hit, and we bought. Oh man, we bought probably a hundred million dollars worth of real estate for 15 million dollars wow and so and you know and, and it all came back of course and then some so that real estate has been a big part of the massive. wealth building equation well the, like the way beyond the first million or even 10 million you know by then i had net worth 10 20 million dollars probably but uh, i dumped every i you know we we cleaned the table off we took the chips off the table when the when the real estate dove in 2008 and you could buy it for 15 cents on the dollar and i still got all of that i never sold any of it so um whew, Pretty that, incredible. that was a home run but the first million but, is the hardest yeah by far wow by far and these principles that once you got these baby steps dialed in and over time you went oh it works but and you know what changed. from a baby steps i didn't i did not even follow the baby steps millionaires thing path because yeah. We were more intense than the baby steps in terms of we didn't do nothing until we got back up there. And um, the other thing I didn't do is I I did get the house paid off because I don't borrow money. Um, but the um, but the 401k di- hadn't had time to germinate. The Roth IRAs didn't have time to germinate and grow and compound. And so they weren't that big a part of it. It was just literally make income, spend nothing make income spend nothing until you get the pain far enough in the rearview mirror and then we can move forward but that was a whole lot more intense and raw than than i ask other people to do to get there baby steps millionaire is more the formula to get there so well thanks for taking us back very interesting thank you james that's good stuff this is the ramsey show Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of The Fine Print and the Entree Leadership Podcast, both on the Ramsey Networks. Be sure and tune in. We're here to help you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Melanie is in Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, Melanie. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um. Okay, so I am the geek in my marriage, and I also work in the banking industry and I am stuck. I don't, I can't make a decision. So I need you to help me. (laughs) We can, we can help. Um, We have an opinion. I promise. I don't even know what it is, but we have an opinion. I'm sure. Okay. So we were doing really, really well about four years ago. And then just this last spring hit us really hard and kind of put us upside down. So I am trying to decide whether or not to get a HELOC, and I'm thinking about doing it for the purpose of consolidating high interest rate debt. My pros are a lower interest rate to knock out credit card debt with higher interest rate and then beat the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw down principal payments before the end of each billing cycle to make the debt go down faster, and then less interest will go towards what the HELOC is. My cons are right now my current DTI is 55%. It needs to be below 45% to qualify. In order for me to do that, I will have to tie in a car loan that we acquired this year, but that car loan is at a fixed 4.75%. And with the way that the interest rate keeps going up with Wall Street, I don't know if putting that car loan over into a HELOC is a smart decision or a dumb decision but I was able to call the credit card company yesterday and negotiate that 24.99% down to 16.99% for a year only. What would Dave do? What's the balance on the car? The car is 45000 What's your household income? Um, so this is going to be a little finicky. Um, together, my husband and I make $105,000 a year. Mm-hmm. But I have a side job that's kind of under the table. And I can bring in an extra forty thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what is how much credit card debt do you have? Fifteen. Okay. What other debt do you have, other than your house? Um. So, <laughs> we literally drove both of our cars until the wheels fell off, and it happened exactly a month apart this spring. We made a family trip to go down to Texas to see some family down there. And I kid you not, a week before we went, the engine blew in our 2012 Traverse. And I tried everything I could to fix it. I used all of our expenses, and then I ended up putting more money on the credit card, which is why it went up. I got to the point where the mechanic was like, just stop. It's not going to happen. And I'm like, fine. So then we ended up getting that new Traverse. Not new, but a used Traverse. And, um, and then our other car, which was a 2000 and. Ten Pontiac uh, I'm Montana. Sorry. How, you have forty five thousand on one car, fifteen thousand in credit card debt, and what other debt? Um, we have another car with fifteen thousand, and then um, our mortgage is three eighteen, okay. three hundred eighteen thousand. Okay. No, you don't need a home equity loan. You need to sell a forty five thousand dollar car. That's insanity. Yeah. You're broke. And I know. You're trying to fix this with interest rates. Because you did a stupid yeah. but over purchase because you were dramified. Correct. Yeah. So I'm looking at seventy five thousand dollars worth of debt total. Correct. Mm-hmm. Outside of the house. Mm-hmm. So if we get rid of the car, and we get you something reasonable, you know, a five thousand dollar car, that leaves you with about thirty thousand left. What's the car worth? That's uh, you have fifteen thousand yeah. loan on it. I'm driving it, and I'm going to take this 140000 and clean this mess up on beans and rice, rice and beans. you got a great income. You don't have an interest rate problem. You have a lifestyle problem. Correct. Cut your lifestyle to nothing. Scorched earth. We had no car payments for six years. Scorched <laughs> earth. You don't need a car payment for six years. You need to be out of debt in one year. 
No, we didn't have car payments for six years. Well, until you lost your mind. Okay. And then you went through. Then you went yeah. through the, the the crazy period of your life <laughs> when you went crazy, <laughs> and now you got yourself in sixty thousand dollars in car debt. Yeah. A home equity loan doesn't fix that. Getting rid of the cars fixes it, or getting rid of the debt fixes it. And you can't get rid of the debt soon enough to suit me if you keep the forty-five thousand dollar car. So I'm moving way down in car. No vacations. No eating out. Scorched earth. No spending on anything. And one hundred and forty thousand will pay off thirty thousand inside of a year, pretty easy actually. Yeah. Are you guys what doing any investing right card? now? No. Okay. Do you have any money in savings? Um, we did until we threw it all at trying to save that other car. <laughs> okay. So you don't have any money in savings right now. No. Okay. Well, let's get you a thousand dollar starter emergency fund, and after that, we're we're selling this car today. And beyond that, you got 140 grand income. We're going to pay off 30. You're going to drive around a beater car, and uh, we'll clean this mess up real quick with so, that kind of income. Here's the thing, Melanie. You're, you're trained as a banker in finance at some level in order to be in the job that you're in. And the thing that we're taught in academia is that interest rate is everything. And if we can simply cut the interest rate, we can solve all these problems. And so you called and negotiated 24 down to 16, 2499 down to 1699. That was a good move, by the way. Excellent job. Uh, but here's the thing. Interest rate mathematically is irrelevant when you're going to pay it all off in one year. Correct. So the home equity loan doesn't solve anything. What the home equity loan does, okay. it's very dangerous is it moves everything over onto your home and you feel like you did something and you drag this mess out for five years instead of cleaning it up in 12 months. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. But You're, we've been going back and forth. And the I home equity loan like is a form of, it's a form of denial. Yes. You're treating the symptom, which is the debt instead of the problem, which is what caused the debt. And you fix yes. the problem with the cutting the in or cutting the outgo to zero, cranking up the side hustle, and cranking down life for one year, and and you know undoing the big dumb decision, which was the forty five thousand dollar car. And it's painful. People are going to think you've lost your mind, and want, you're going to wonder, gosh, man, I'm getting rid of this car. Am I, am I a failure? You're not a failure. You're just you just made a mistake, and you're fixing the mistake. I've done a lot dumber things than what you did, but this was dumb. It's on the it's on the dumb list. So, um, but but you're not dumb. You just did a dumb thing. There's two different things. And I've done. A, I'm not dumb, but I've done a lot of dumb things. And George, George is not don't dumb. Don't get me started. Don't tell me how many dumb things he's done. So, but I haven't done the HELOC. That one hasn't uh, never tricked me. Oh, I had I did HELOC. That's dang. That puts your home at risk. Back in my old uh, real estate investing days, when I borrowed everything in sight, I HELOCed everything, mm. and then I unlocked it and locked it again. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Well, in 2020, house prices went up 29%. In 21, they went up 18%. This year, they're going to go up 8%. Next year, most people are predicting 4 to 5%. That means your old insurance policy may not have you with enough coverage. Homeowner's insurance does not go up as the value of your house does unless you cause it to. So you need to contact your insurance agent and make sure you have enough coverage on your home. You might have a home that was 400000 and now it's 600000 and you don't have it covered but for four hundred. That would be a bad thing if it burned, right? So you need to do this. Now, here's the thing. While you're at it, you might as well check with our endorsed local providers. They are independent insurance agents, which means they will shop around a bazillion different companies, get you the best price ever on your homeowners and your car, for that matter. And uh, these P&C, property and casualty agents, so this is the way to buy it. When you buy insurance from somebody like State Farm, uh, that's a captive agent. They can only sell for one thing, State Farm. So guess what they're going to tell you you should buy? State Farm. State Farm. That's hard to figure out, isn't it? And by the way, it's more expensive. So you can save tons of money by shopping among a different, a group of different companies and have an independent agent do that for you. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash home. Talk to a trusted home insurance pro today. Check out our insurance property and casualty endorsed local providers. They're Ramsey Trusted. RamseySolutions.com slash home. Sheila is with us in Seattle. Hi, Sheila. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, George. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So, okay, uh, here's my background. I'm 48 years old. Uh, I live near Seattle. Um, Single mom. My son is about to finish college. He's um, 23. He'll be done um, June of next year. Our rent has increased. It's currently at 1800 and then this coming September, it's going to be 2150 And I was so upset. Anyway, I do have um, 20K of uh, emergency fund, 100K in money market. That was originally of... Uh, from the uh, from trying to come up with a down payment, but it's almost impossible. By the way, I'm an RN. I work from home as an oncology nurse, and I make 123k. And uh, I got 401k, 43b. I got Roth IRA, and so I'm I'm needing some advice on my next step. I'm thinking. Why are you not I buying a house? Should- well, it's ridiculous here, Dave. It's like 600K, and that's not enough 20% in King County. And, I, and when I did move to a different county, um, it still is about four to 500. So I'm like, even for. But you got 100 to put so down. I can't put that down? Is that enough? Sure. Put it on a 15-year fixed where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. And buy that amount of house. Oh, I doubted that I could find that house, but... Well, you I said guess you work from home, right? Fixed. So you can you can move to a more affordable area? I do. I'm thinking just nearby counties, like um, yeah. just near my church. Yeah. I like that. And that's a cheaper area, oh. right? Well, it's still about five hundred k. Yeah, but if you put if you take out a five hundred thousand, I mean, if you have a five hundred thousand dollar house, you put down a hundred thousand. That's a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage with the money you make. That ought to fit. Really? Okay. I was thinking I should have that in, in mutual funds. No, you. I, 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 I thought you saved it up for a down payment. Yeah, I mean that was the original intent. Yeah, but what happened oh, was okay. you watched the news too much. <laughs> Stole your hope That's and inst- and Instagram, and you watched all these TikTok news. economists. Internet. I was actually thinking, Dave, that I need to move in with, uh, you know, a friend or an acquaintance, and you're not broke. And I, you got no debt. I'm you make 120 broke. grand. I know. I was just thinking of saving up more, like 200k, 300k, and live with somebody, a woman. Christian woman. Um, Me- meanwhile, this house goes up in years. value, and it's harder oh, and really? harder to purchase. 
Okay, so I should start looking then. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, you? you don't you don't need to get an eight hundred thousand dollar house. I'll go look for that four hundred thousand dollar home that suits you in a different county, like you mentioned. And you got a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage that's very reasonable for your income. And if you do it with our parameters, there's no need to stress. When you look at the facts on paper, you go, "Oh, I can breathe." Oh, and it could be funded like bringing a roommate when you did that, and now you're living for almost nothing, and you can pile up cash real quick and move up. In a few years. That's a good idea, too. You know? Meanwhile, the house you're living in is going up in value. It's a moving target there. There we go. Jessica's in South Carolina. Hi, Jessica. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how's it going? Better Thank than... y'all for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Okay, so I just found out about you guys and the way to, like, start of getting out of debt with the seven baby steps. However, I currently have been living paycheck to paycheck, and I'm just now going into a completely different industry. And so I'm going from hourly of making $18 an hour to now I'm going to salary, starting out at 50000 And then I'm Great. losing Way to go. benefits. And I'm also going to be losing my Roth IRA. So I just don't know where to start. Because due to the work change in, I'm having to relocate and living as well. Why are you losing the Roth? Because at my new job, I do not have that option. Oh, you like mean you, you didn't lose your Roth. Your Roth you have a, if you have a Roth, it goes with you, but you just don't have a new one at the new work, and you have to do one on your own. But first, go, yes, first things first, we're going to get you out of debt, build up an emergency fund. Have you done that? No, sir. Okay. I have. I don't have any savings. Okay. So, what kind of debt do you have? <laughs> credit cards and a car. Okay. How much on the credit cards? Sixteen thousand. And how much on the car? A uh, twenty-three. Okay. Well, what kind of car is this? A twenty-nineteen Toyota Rav Four. Okay. It is. A, it's a lot of car. I mean, it's reasonable for your new income. Uh, what, do you know what it's worth? Um, I did like an appraisal on like Carfax, and I think they said it was going to be around twenty four. Okay. But the thing was, I thought about putting it, you know, up for sale and like trading it in, but I don't have anything in savings to where I could find, you know, a reliable car. Yeah. Even with if I had a savings and I don't have anything. So I'm just kind of like at ground zero and I don't know where to go. Yeah, let's pretend you're not going to sell the car. You may end up selling it. But for right now, we'll pretend you're not going to sell it and make the move. And now you're going to get on a written budget where every dollar has a name. How old are you, 24? Uh, no, sir, I'm 32. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Well, we're going to put you into Financial Peace University, our nine-week class. If we give it to you for free, will you take it? Yes, sir. Okay. So watch all nine lessons in there. And part of that, you're going to set up your every dollar budget. So you're going to have your income on one side, which is your you know take-home pay from that 50000 salary. On the other side, you have all of your expenses. And I mean everything. Go back and look at your bank account. And with the version we're going to send you, it'll actually connect to your bank account, which is going to be super helpful. And once you do that, you're going to go... Oh, okay. At first, it's scary because you're looking in the mirror, realizing I thought I spent way less on clothes and food and whatever else. Once you do that, I want you to create enough margin to where you have extra to put on that debt, on those minimum payments. So list them all out, smallest to largest, regardless of the interest rate. And we're going to start attacking the little one with a vengeance. That might mean getting a side job. It might mean cutting subscriptions. It might mean selling old stuff in the closet. But it's going to get addicting and exciting. And soon, you're going to be debt free. It for sure means you're not going on vacation or going out to eat. You're broken in debt. If you're going to keep this car, you're going to have to really sacrifice and plow through these debts and get rid of them. Oh, by the way, when we hang up with you after Austin picks up, I want you to get the scissors out and cut up your credit cards right now. They've been such a blessing. This is The Ramsey Show.
chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast, you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. George Campbell, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money here on The Ramsey Show. The phone number, 888-825-5225. Chase is with us in Los Angeles. Hi, Chase. How are you? Hi. I'm uh, grateful to be alive. How are you guys? Same here, brother. What's up? Um, so I've been listening to you for about a year now, um, and I listen to you every day on my way to work. I pretty much dream and fantasize about getting debt free and i'm having a hard time diving full into your uh program into the baby steps um, Why? i'm a recovering addict i'm a recovering addict i've been um sober two and a half years good for you and i just have this thank you um i just have this giant fear of losing everything and i have you know like when I when I was on drugs, I you know was looking for change on the streets, had no money, calling people for money all hours of the night, and um, now that I have you know a pretty good savings, I have fifteen thousand dollars in my savings. I'm I'm really terrified to let it go that you know I'll lose everything like I did in my addiction, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just kind of wondering what advice you can give me to make that leap of faith and just go all in. Um, good for you. So what what were I'm you addicted not, to? I'm just mess whoa good for you that's a tough wow. one to break yeah proud of you how old are you yeah it was really hard i'm 33 wow and what's your income now um well i uh sell cars mm -hmm. used cars and um this year i'm on track to make ninety thousand a year good for you man that's um, amazing you're amazing Chase. thank you thanks previous to that i was making uh twenty thousand a year as a flight attendant okay yeah. Um, so this this big jump in income um, has been pretty great for me. Yeah. Um, How much debt have you I got? Have, I have fifty eight thousand dollars in student loan debt. I just cash flowed my last semester, uh -huh. um, and um, I have twenty one thousand dollars in a car. I have three thousand dollars in collections. And I have uh, twelve hundred dollars on credit cards. Mm hmm. Okay. And that's it. All right. Well, I'm I'm very proud of you. Uh, breaking Thank an addiction you. is a tough thing. Breaking meth is a really super tough thing. Uh, you're you're yeah, you're a man you're a man for, uh, that is beating the odds. <laughs> I appreciate that. And um, and now you're trying to address other behavior things. So here's the deal. When you were uh, walking down the street looking for quarters because you were a meth addict, uh, that's a different guy mm -hmm. than I'm talking to, isn't it? It is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I But have your no, body, as Dr. You know, John Deloney says, your body remembers the terror of being broke. Yeah. Combined with and the drug addiction. It, yeah, it terrifies me. Yeah. I know I have a good head on my shoulders now. Um but what I'm, my uh, point is, is the, the, the thing that is welling up inside of you, then you physically feel it, probably, 
is the yeah. you, you, when you think about being without that fifteen thousand, it takes you back. You just told me this, so I know it does. It takes you back to picking up quarters on the street. Yeah. However, you and I both know Definitely. that intellectually, that is not the reality. The reason you were on the street picking up quarters was meth. It wasn't fifteen grand. Yeah. If you'd have had fifteen grand, you'd have spent it on drugs. Yeah. And you're not yeah. that guy now. Exactly. Yeah. So our intellect tells us that the facts are Chase is operating in a completely different mindset in a completely different world than the terrifying thing that's keeping him to move forward on this. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, I just needed to hear it, I guess. Yeah. So you are more worthy than, than your guts tell you when you start t talking about pulling the 15 grand. So I'm going to do something I almost never do here. Okay. Uh huh. I'm going to modify yeah. my advice a tiny bit. Okay. Okay. Because I'm empathizing with the way your heart rate is going up when you're talking about this. Normally, I just call people a wuss and tell them to bone up and do it, right? Okay. In yeah. your case, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to give you 30 days. All right. Okay. Here's what we're going to do today. I want you to pay off the credit card and cut it up. That's $1,200. And the collections, that's okay. $3,000. Okay. Now, we really didn't affect your cushion very much, mathematically. Agreed? Yes. You're still sitting after you finish that on 12000 and some change. Agreed? Yeah. So you're still yeah. okay. Breathe. But what that little experiment <laughs> does is I want you to get the high. Oh, that's a bad use of words. I want you to get the <laughs> joy. I want you to get there the joy go. of having paid off the debt. Right. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to compare yeah. that to the fear from your past. All right. And then I'm going to tell you in the next 30 days, take the rest of that money down to a thousand, get your butt on a budget and tear into this thing like I would everybody else. Okay. Okay. But today, and then one week from today, I want you to sit down and write out somewhere how it felt to pay off those two debts. Cause let me tell you what you're going to feel. I'll okay. go ahead and tell you. You're going to have a sense of power, empowerment. Yeah. You're going to have a sense of I'm in control because part yeah. of being an addict is you're out of control and you need a sense of control to move forward into your new self, don't you? Yes. Yeah. And Chase, you, you mentioned this sense of security with the 15,000, but it's an illusion because on the other side, you've got 84,000 in debt. And so there's not a place of yeah. safety until you're completely out of that debt. And you work at a used car lot. Could you sell the car and get a car off that lot for nothing and drive that around while you pay off the rest of this debt? Would that give you another win? Um, I've, I've thought about it. I, um, I got an appraisal a couple of days ago. Um, they offered me 19 on my car. I owe 22, I think. Um, if I cancel like the warranty and gap insurance that I bought, I could get it close to 19. Yeah. Um, and then I could possibly buy a wholesale car from our wholesale lot. We get wholesale prices. I've thought about that. Now we're getting creative. Um, but I, I, and do that with I, I and do that with know. cash. Now we're down to just a student loan. Yeah. You can use some of your savings to even do that and get out from under this car. Yeah. Go buy you a five seven thousand yeah. dollar wholesale car, which is a ten or fifteen thousand dollar car. Well, it's not it's probably a ten thousand dollar car, right? Buy it for seven. Yeah. And uh, use some of that money for that. Now we're out of car debt. Now we're just down to a student loan. And making 90K. Right. And making 90K. Knock this thing out, man. You, you, hey, I, I smell success. Ooh. I smell it in the air, brother. Yeah. You got me excited. There we go. So here's what you, but, <laughs> and I think you're going to be more excited when you actually wake up and those two debts are gone. You can draw, put them on the refrigerator, draw a big red line through collections, a big red line through the credit card. Oh, you got to cut up the credit card. That's part of the exercise, okay? Yeah, I've uh, cut up two of them. Yeah. No, you're there, not there, there yet. This is all in, brother. Three credit cards. <laughs> this is all in. I'll cut it up right when I hang up. That's I'll all cut in, it up okay? Right when I hang up. Yeah. And all I'll right. tell you what, we're, we want to be part of the final steps of your healing. You have done such a wonderful job in the journey that you're on. You're such an important guy right now. Uh, we, we want to uh, put you through Financial Peace University. So we're going to walk with you while you do the rest of these things. But. Um, 
what you're going to experience there is what people experience in the early days of doing their debt snowball. When you pay off that little one, you go, yeah. Then you pay off another one, and you're like, yeah. And there's an emotional thing that happens, even though the math is small, because it, it, it's an action associated with taking control of your destiny. And I can't wait for you to come do your debt-free scream. That's going to be a powerful one. Yeah. That'll be fun. And you can we'll pull this call up and play part of it. And... Um, you know, a year, two years from now, and five years from now, you're a Baby Steps millionaire. And man, you'll have a testimony what, at that What point. a story. Yeah. What a story, man. You're amazing. Could inspire a lot of people. Way to go, dude. If you can beat meth, you can beat debt. I mean, that's Whoa. that's my line of the day. Oh, right that's a billboard right this there. This guy's impressive. Way to go, Chase. Hang on. Austin will pick up. This is The Ramsey Show. George Camel Ramsey, personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. The phone number, 888-825-5225. Tiffany in New York City. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? <laughs> uh, thank you for taking my call. I called about a year ago and spoke to Anthony and Dr. John, and they gave me some wonderful advice. And I'm happy to say, with God's good grace, that I became debt free before I turned 41. Good for you. Uh, the only thank you. The only debt I have left, my husband and I, is our home, and I have three more years before I can retire from my profession. And my question is, sir, is um, we're on the baby step number four. And I have a pension and annuity and a 457. And I'm contributing to my pension as well as an extra 50% in addition to what I have to contribute to my pension as well as 5% to my 457. And I feel like I'm maybe not contributing enough. 50%? Yes. Of your income? 50 Yes. How are you not contributing enough if you're putting in half of your income? I don't know if I should leave that towards my pension or take that away from the pension and put it towards my 457. I would put it in the 457 because the pension okay. dies when you do. The 457 doesn't. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know. But it, it baby steps four, five, and six, you should be putting 15% mm -hmm. of your income towards retirement of your household income, and then everything above that should be going to baby steps five and six, paying your kids college and paying off your house. Do you have kids in college or going to college or anything? No, we have uh, a two-and-a-half-year-old and a one who's going to be one-year-old next month. Great. I would start at least start a college fund for them in baby step five, 15% of your income towards retirement, and then everything else going to baby step six. Yeah, I don't know where the 50% is coming from. It sounds like you got some time. I mean, you got three years here until you're saying you're going to retire, but it doesn't sound like a dire situation right now. 41 years old, too. So yeah. you have time. And no, I, I would not be putting 50% 50 50 of your money away. You're not going to be able to live. Towards retirement um, until your home is paid off. And then if you wanted to get that aggressive at baby step seven, when you're debt free, everything, then you could if you wanted to. McKenna is in Orlando. Hi, McKenna. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Great. What's up? Hi. So I just got offered today my first full-time job out of college. Way to go. Um, how much? Thank you. Um, 38000 as a teacher at a private Christian school. Um, so I'll be going to sign the paperwork tomorrow, and I know that there's 
401ks and different things. Um, but I just want your opinion and uh, just what I should be looking for. Um, I don't think that there's a teacher's union with it being a private Christian school, but Good. anything else I should be looking for in the paperwork. No, I mean, we love a 401k around here, and if you've got a Roth option, that's even better. And uh, I don't want you okay. doing that until you're out of debt. Do you have debt currently? I don't. That's good news. And you do you have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses? Um, I have $3,000 in an emergency fund. Okay. Well, let's beef that up as you step into this career. And once you get to that three to six month mark, then we can begin investing into whatever options they have. So I would do your research, see if they have a Roth 401k and begin investing 15% of your gross income. And inside of that 401k, that's just a shell. So we want you to invest in good growth stock mutual funds uh, inside of that 401k. Okay. So right now, I actually have about $20,000 invested with a SmartVestor Pro mm-hmm. um, that I started about a year and a half ago. Great. Because um, I've been following you guys since, like, high school because mm-hmm. I'm just a geek over numbers. Wow. Um, so is is this something that I should combine the money as far as 401k and no. the mutual funds I already have going? No. As a matter of fact, what I would do... You need to build your emergency fund, so I'm probably not signing up for the 401k tomorrow when you do your paperwork, okay? I want want you to go and get that 3,000 up to three to six months of expenses, and you've been geeking on our stuff, so you knew we were going to say that. Then what I would do is take your 401k (laughs) options, the mutual funds that you're for, maybe even be a 403b as a teacher in a private school, okay? It may Matter of fact, likely is, okay? But it's the same kind of a thing. Look at the mutual fund okay. options. Holler at your SmartVestor Pro and ask them to look at the stuff with you. You might be better off just to continue a Roth IRA with the SmartVestor Pro than to deal with a 403B if it's got bad options or if it's not Roth. Okay. Okay. And then with Roth, isn't that where you can't touch it for so many years? All of these are. Okay, gotcha. 401k, so 403b, Roth, all of that is 59 and a half before you can get to it. They're retirement plans. That's what they're for. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, the Roth is just a type of tax treatment where you're going to use your after-tax dollars to invest, and it grows tax-free. Yeah, let your SmartVestor Pro guide you in this, and I think you'll end up in a really good place. First, get your emergency fund in place before you do either one. Good stuff. Well done. Zach's with us in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hi, Zach. How are you? Hey, what's going on, Dave? How are you, my man? I uh, just wanted to say thanks for letting me on here. I got a sorry. I got a lot of respect for you and all that you do, man. I've been listening to your podcast and reading some of your books for a few years now, and I'm very grateful to be here on the, the show with you. Well, thank you. How can we help today? So, long story short, uh, I've been an investor now for a little while. Um, I am in real estate with my father. We own a LLC where we have um, R1 zone, neighborhood zones, homes within, you know, like a residential area. And then we also do VRBOs and Airbnbs. Um, I find a lot of passion out of that, and I get a lot of my income from that. So when I take that income and I invest it, I've been doing stocks for a little bit here now and there. And I've been doing, and again, I think from your posts on Facebook and everything, you might be a little skeptical, but I've been paying very close attention to crypto and I've been watching the charts. And in terms of financing this move that I'm thinking of doing, and this is why I wanted your professional opinion, because I look at you as a role model. And I know you got your stuff straight. Um, I've been doing and investing in Schwab now, uh, Schwab investment account for the last two two or so years and i've been putting away about a grand every month good for and you and i also have a roth that i put 500 into good for you so what i was this is the main sorry go ahead no you're so your main question is bitcoin so yes that so i've been putting money aside uh-huh. now for the last two years roughly yeah. a grand every month and i have up, upwards of about so why do you want to lose it thousand dollars <laughs> that's the thing is i because I've had mixed I've had mixed feelings on it. I've slept over it, you know. I've yeah. talked to my father about it. Yeah. I've talked to friends, different investors that are pro and against. Um, well, you're doing I, real I estate investing like- and you're doing mutual fund investing, which are both super conservative investments. And then over here on the other side, you're talking about gambling, um, which is oh, where Bitcoin a is. Bit, in a way, no, it's not a little bit. It's yeah, a lot. I'm- 
the probability of losing money in Bitcoin is very high. So, I mean, you can do what you want to do, boss. Yeah, you're, you're asking, should I take some of this money I'm making and throw it into Bitcoin? And the answer is no from us. I mean, you said you've been listening to the show for a while. Neither Dave and I invest in crypto. It has no track record that makes me feel good about throwing money into it. I'd rather go to Vegas at that point and at least have some fun and be entertained instead of staring at uh, the Robin Hood app, watching it go 24-7, volatile, up and down, up and down. So I'll stick to my 401k, IRAs, real estate. That's the way that we talk about building wealth around here. We don't put money in things that don't have a proven track record. And um, Bitcoin's not been around long enough to have a proven track record. I got and the, track record, and the track record that it has so far has proven it to suck so far. Um, so when you have a proven track record over many, many years, like decades, then we'll talk about it. But you can do whatever you want to do. But it's just an ultra high risk discussion. The stories I'm hearing about people destroying their life over crypto, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's uh, well, and it's all because I studied the charts. You know, no, thank you. I, you can do whatever you want to do, Zach. But the, all the stuff you're doing sounds very cool and very well done. And the thing that doesn't fit in this glaring situation is this one stupid thing you're talking about doing. So I wouldn't do it. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth do work that they love and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of The Fine Print and the Entree Leadership Podcasts on Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Eric is with us in Lansing, Michigan. Hi, Eric. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Ramsey, it is an absolute honor, sir. So uh, thank you. Thank uh, you. For the opportunity to speak with you and... Uh, uh, thank you for your backwoods hillbilly wisdom because you've changed my family. Uh, we've been debt free house and all for a little while now. So thank you very much, sir. Wow. Way to go, man. So you own a house debt free. Way to go. Yes. So I have a real estate question. I'm curious what 37 year old Dave would say. Uh, so my in laws currently have two houses, one in Michigan and one in Florida. They winter in Florida, so they're snowbirds. They no longer want the maintenance and upkeep of a house here in Michigan, so they're selling it. My wife and I, we've been looking at purchasing a lake house. So my in-laws came to us with the proposition of gifting us 50% cash towards a down payment on a lake house. Uh, the understanding is that they would live with us or live at the lake house during the summer months for three to four months, and the house would then be in our name solely. So we have been saving for a house. We don't obviously don't have you know the other fifty percent remaining. But I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Wow, very generous of them. Yeah, yes, we we have a very good relationship. Okay, so you're they're going to give you how much money? Fifty percent towards. Oh, no. What is that? How much money is that? House. Well, I I don't want to go over four hundred thousand total for the purchase. Okay, so they're going to give you two hundred thousand dollars in return. They get to live in the lake house in the summer, which, by the way, is the only time you can use it. Can you visit there? Can you visit your lake house in the summer? Yeah, absolutely. While yep. they're there, so what we're looking at. You guys can go up yeah. and put the boat in the water, and all of you play, and all of you while they're living there in the summer, you'll be able to use it. Yes, it would be big enough for both of us to be there in the summer, and we would utilize it in the winter too. And you've got kids. Uh, yes, sir. Known as their grandkids. Yeah, and it's, I'm liking great this. Yeah, this is great. They they're smart people. Okay, so you don't, but you don't I'm, have the other two hundred grand. No, not yet. Okay, how how long before you have that? 
honestly, it would probably take us, uh, you know, four to five years before we got that. Well, probably closer to four. Okay. Well, Lake House is a toy, and I'm not going in debt for a toy. So, um, and when I bought my Lake House many, 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 many years ago, I didn't go in debt for it. It's a toy. Okay. And so, no, no, you don't. Uh, you got out of debt. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. Uh, it's, it's. Uh, yeah. What's your income? I, I guess. Uh, so my wife and I we make about one hundred and forty thousand a year. Okay, yeah. you don't have any payments, so I'm going. What does it look like to start looking once we have a hundred grand and they can put in, you know, they put in a hundred and we start looking at more affordable options for lake houses. And if it's not the right one, then we keep waiting until we have the cash to do it and we can pony up fifty and fifty. Yeah, it's just really tough as far as getting something that we want in that price range at this point in time. But no, I, I get where you're coming from. Is uh, there any urgency around this? No, he just wants a lake house. Well, of course I want a lake house. <laughs> Who doesn't want a lake house? Agreed. I agree. I'm with you. I'm but 100% it by with you on that. Three years of delaying this dream, yeah. you'll, be, you'll live, right? Well, or, or do it in some other way. But here's the thing. It, because, it, because it's in a sense, they're they're putting the money on the table now, and that's pushing the urgency to do it now. And, that, and the fact that it's a lake house and you're getting half of the equity covered for you. It seems ludicrous not to borrow the money to do it, but I still am not going to borrow the money to do a toy. I'm sorry, dude. I wouldn't do it um, okay. if I were you. You ask what I would do, and um, and I can verify that I would not do that because I did not do that. I saved up and okay. paid cash because, you know, again, you're, you're in Michigan. Your summers are short, and so you got three or four months of use a year, and, you know, and you're going to pay payments on it 12 months. So, no, I yep. – I, I, um, I wouldn't do that. Now, um, what is these folks' net worth? I have no clue. Well, if you were going to guess, $10 million, a million? Oh, uh, over a million, but yeah. I, I don't know beyond that. Okay. So basically, this money would be coming from the sale of their Michigan house. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe they go buy the lake house when they sell it, mm -hmm. the one that you all agree that you want and you delay you and you say, okay, I'd like to lock in that I can buy it for half of that, uh, when I can save up the money in a few years. Meantime, you know, we'll all use it together. Right. Yeah. It's, it, you know, we were just looking at this as an option. It was proposed and yeah. you know them so the it's a wonderful they gift back here in the summer and it's a wonderful gift and a lot of things but listen if you add up the payments on two hundred thousand dollars for the number of times that you're there uh it's expensive you could go on some really nice vacations it's expensive and so um yeah i i i want you to be able to figure out a way to do it but if it if it involves you going into debt i'm i would not personally do that and i would not recommend it and I love the idea of you having a lake house. I love the idea of them paying for half of it. I love all these ideas, but I, I'm not ever going to tell somebody to go in debt for a toy. And this is it. So. Now, on the real estate side, Dave, if the in-laws buy the lake house and he wants to buy them out of it, Later. what is the right way to do that? Later. They could just deed it over to him. Okay. He hands them a check for two hundred k. They buy a $400,000 lake house and agree that when he hands them two hundred k, they hand him a deed. Um, and he starts saving his 200k and buys them out in a few years on the same deal. That but plan just, just gives me a lot of peace. And so when you say and that I'm like that. thinking Papa and Granny here have some money, but I could be wrong. That they might be able to afford it in cash. I don't know. I don't know if they can or not. Yeah. But, um, if they're sitting on a two or three, four million dollar net worth, 400 grand is not going to kill them. And they were plan on gifting this anyway, and so on. So yeah. Mm. But it's a good no, question. No, I would not tell you to borrow money. Thanks for the call. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Once you get out of debt, once I got out of debt, and I felt the freedom, there wasn't anything going to get me back in. But I had some temptations like he has had over the years. You know, we had a building, the first office building that we had, we leased it for five years and I had an option to purchase it for $5 million. When I did the deal, I didn't have any money, hardly. I mean, I had net worth, but I didn't have, I didn't have $5 million. 
and I'm leasing it for five years. Well, during that time, the building becomes worth about fourteen million. Wow! And you still and have I've the option got the to right buy it. to buy it for five million, and for five years, I'm at four years and some change, and I'm scratching nickels out of the corner of the couch trying to get the five million together because I don't want to miss this. I was tempted to to not walk away from all that equity yeah. that was built into this option deal to go borrow money but I, zeros but on I'm the not end. borrowing money Woo. I'm not borrowing money it's, it's a sign from God I'm not supposed to have it if I don't have the money mm. it's a simple thing for me this is the Ramsey Show personalities my co-host today this week we announced that two of our building wealth events for the fall have sold out phoenix september 13th sold out sacramento november 1st sold out that leaves minneapolis with a few tickets november the 10th san antonio with a few tickets november 15th and we opened an extra night for phoenix we cannot get extra nights in the other cities so when they're gone they're gone but uh, we'll be there September 12th for Phoenix, and uh, we launched it um, a couple days ago. It's already half sold out. Wow. So these things are going very, very quickly, George. Uh, these uh, B- Building Wealth Live events are me and George and Rachel Cruz and Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney. Uh, we'll talk to you about what's going on in the economy, what you've got to do to build wealth. We'll have a panel discussion. We'll be signing books, taking pictures, hanging out. And e- these are all like 3,000-person events type size they're not super large they're not like arena events uh big theater events and but they do sell out very very quickly and tickets are only 25 dollars. you can get a four pack starting at 60 bucks at ramseysolutions.com slash events george this is exciting these are selling out so fast i know and the crowds have been amazing my favorite part is just getting to meet people after the event and hear their stories and I think it's a mix of the event is great, yes, but people are also desperate to get out of the house and go to events again. Yeah. And it's been amazing to see the response to these. It's interesting to, from an attendee's perspective to be in an audience of 3,000 or 4,000 people, whatever it is, uh, all people there with the same goal, which is actually you know taking control of your own destiny, building wealth so that you can be generous. And there's just a shared dream there. And so it's not like a, a mix of people who don't want to win, who are victims or whatever. It's all, it's like a pep rally for the stuff we yeah. do in a sense. And we're swimming upstream because culture, media, they're telling people, hey, you can't win in this economy. You can't beat inflation. You can't build wealth. You'll never retire. And we're over here on our street corner just yelling, going, it's possible. You can do this stuff. <laughs> RamseySolutions.com slash events. Get your tickets to these live events. We're also doing in Dallas the Smart Conference. It is, uh, I think, 65% sold out for October 22nd already. So if you want tickets to that as well, that's a day-long event uh, with all of us, plus Craig and Amy Groeschel speaking on marriage this year. Helen is with us in Chicago. Hi, Helen. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure, what's up? So, um, my question is, um, we're ready to start Baby Steps 4, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. So, I'm looking into my retirement options. I'm a teacher, Mm -hmm. and what my district provides are 403Bs and 457s, Mm -hmm. and then Roth options for both. And I'm not sure which one to take for the Roth options. Four hundred three B. Roth is better than a traditional, right? Four, four, oh, yeah, Roth is best, and four hundred three B. Okay, so Roth. I'm is assuming best, you've got then, some good mutual fund options in the four hundred three B. Have you looked at those? Yes, they. Um, I did a webinar last night, and then um, I got some information on that. They have a Vanguard Index five hundred. Um, they have a lot of. They do have a lot of them that I've heard you speak of online uh, or um, on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do want to look into those as well. Good. Um, They do have like target date ones as well. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Okay. (laughs) So, yeah, they do have mutual funds. 
Right, just straight up mutual funds. And we always tell you to put a fourth in each, growth, growth and income, aggressive growth, and international. Your S&P 500 falls in the growth category, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, that's one of your four. It pick you out a good international. It'll be the worst performing of the four categories, probably, when you look at the track record on it. Uh, and aggressive growth or emerging markets, uh, it'll sound something like that. And that'll be the highest performing uh, but the most volatile, and the boring one will be the growth and in income. And that's also sometimes called a blue chip fund or a large cap fund. Sometimes your aggressive growth is called a small cap fund. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. It's an Way awesome to place to be. Yeah, it's a great place. If you go across those four types, George, um, and, and you pick ones that have good long track records, you will have followed what we've been teaching for 30 years and what the Baby Steps Millionaires followed that caused them to become Baby Steps Millionaires. And the third uh, ranking career teacher. Yeah, that's in true. The study. That's exactly right. Good point. Good so point. there you go. She's on her way. When we did the study of millionaires, we one of the things we found as we studied 10,000 millionaires was they, the um, number one career most likely to be, uh, that showed up the most often among millionaires was engineer. Number two was accountant. Number three was teacher. Uh, four was manager. And five was lawyer. Doctors, MDs didn't make the top five. There were number six. What and, are they busy doing? Spending money? Impressing people? Well, docs are, I mean, they, they, obviously they make a lot of money, so a lot of them become millionaires. But they're notorious for stupid financial decisions. I mean, they're... They're, they're like, like like music artists or something. I mean, yeah. it's like... Or, you Teachers know, have good heads on their shoulders. NFL players. I mean, you know, it's that kind of stuff. Not quite that bad. But yeah, but they're, they, there's... Um, doc, doc-itis has with it an arrogance that because you're a medical doctor, you know something about everything. Mm. And so they tend to uh, uh, make bad financial decisions instead of conservative, traditional... They have you know, giant mortgages, along, luxury they, cars. They think they can figure out some kind of risky investment. Yeah. So not all of them, but some do. Yeah. Uh, all right. Dallin is with us in Phoenix. Hey, Dallin, what's up? Oh, not much, Dave. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. How can we help? Um. So you were just talking about doctors and different things. I'm uh, on pace right now to get into dental school here in uh a uh, couple years, and I'm just trying to find out the best ways to afford and pay for dental school. We don't have um, enough saved up, obviously, to pay for that in cash, and none of our families are going to help us financially, my wife and I. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know the military is a great option. Mm-hmm. If we can get into the military and do it through one of the branches, that's a great option. But I was wondering if either of you had any uh, idea of other places where I could start looking to get some support there. So how much is this going to cost based on your research? Um, Based on my research, um, here in Arizona, we don't have any public dental schools. So if I leave the state, I have to pay out-of-state tuition. So that raises tuition up. Um, So the cheapest that I found for out-of-state is about 80000 a year for dental school. So you're looking at 320, 350 uh, at a minimum for just tuition alone. Mm. How much money do you have saved? Um, right now we have right around 50,000 in the bank. Okay. And what do you do for a living currently? Um, we, we work college jobs. I work at a a manufacturing early in the mornings and my wife. So you're, you're an undergrad. So you're 23 or 22. Yeah, I'm 23 years old. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, here, here's the problem. Okay. Um, for some reason, and I really don't know what the reason is, um, someone closer to the subject probably could explain it to me. Uh, dental school is more expensive than med school, which baffles the mind actually. Um, but, um, Because dentists don't make more than MDs make, uh, you know, by and large. Uh, So uh, I I cannot tell you in good conscience, having worked with dentists for years in uh, entree leadership, helping them with their practices, helping them with their business practices, 
uh, looking at these things. I, I can't in good conscience tell you to go $400,000 or $300,000 in debt to do this. I don't, I wouldn't personally. Okay. But is there a way to get at it? Well, like you said, military is one. Uh, another thing is that there's a huge movement in dental, in the dental world to, for corporate dentistry, a lot of big companies, uh, corporate conglomerates are buying up practices. And some of those might have scholarship programs. They might have, if you promise to work there or work for them for so many years when you come out type of a thing. Uh, I would trade out a few years after I get out for free dental school mm. if I could find a company that would do that. Uh, I don't know one to send you to, but there's a lot of movement in that direction. Be very, very careful with this. This is very dangerous. personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. John and Joy are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Great. Hello Dave, how are you? Better than I deserve. So Amen. good to have you guys. Where do y'all live? Akron, Ohio. Oh cool. Welcome to Nashville. How much debt have you paid off? $76,000. All right. How long did that take? Um, about three years. Okay. Two and a half, three years. All right. Very cool. And your range of income during that time? Uh, about one hundred thousand dollars to about one ten. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I was in IT and have recently uh, switched careers to uh, vocational instructor. Oh, cool. Yeah. Good for you. And I, I work in cardiac rehab. Oh, good. Okay, great. What kind of debt was the seventy six thousand? Everything, you name it. <laughs> uh, credit cards, mowers, trucks, uh, student loans, the whole bit. So you were like normal people. Normal. Normal Americans, yep. deeply in debt, and got a good mower. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> until even that wore out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Kept the payments, but got rid of the mower. Yep. Oh. Wow. Okay, so what happened three years ago that was the wake-up call, and how'd you get connected to this Ramsey stuff? Yeah, we had, um, I think the, uh, the hot water tank uh, was the big one. It, it was a, an emergency that wasn't planned for and uh, took a dive on us, and we didn't have any means to pay for it and it was you know it, it's just a hot water tank but it, it was huge you know for us mm. and um and quite frankly when you can't provide hot water for your family it kind of does a little something to your man card you know and in mm. your dignity and mm. so that set us off um so you said you were done with the credit cards at that point you went we don't have the money for life's emergencies we got to get on a plan well right? the credit cards wouldn't even let it loan us money at that point so wow so you max out the cards yeah, yeah. wow so how'd you get connected to us at that point? We had some friends that had mentioned um, an envelope system and not having credit cards. And when we got to that point of hitting rock bottom, we said, hey, let's let's find out who that guy was. And so we did, and we got your book, and we read it together. And um, instead of a $1,000 emergency fund, we were shooting for an $1,800 emergency fund because we had no hot water, mm -hmm. taking some cold showers. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'll put some pep in your step to you get on the plan. Yeah. So the first, first, first order of business is get hot water. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Yep. So total money makeover book, I guess. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sir. And that got you started on the whole thing. Yep. And then three years you slogged through it, huh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We did a little door dashing. We did a little bit of, you know, uh, garage sailing. We, you name it. I mean, it was kind of our date night sometimes, door dashing, you know, mm -hmm. to make an extra 300 bucks. But... At the end of the day, here we are, and uh, it got us here. So, what was the hardest thing to get rid of that you had to sell? Or, I mean, for me, I'm the spender. She's the nerd. Um, I, I sold a uh, 
67 uh, K guitar, acoustic electric. It wasn't Ooh. that cool. It wasn't like it was a Gibson or anything, but it was, it was cool to me, you know. Yeah. Ooh, vintage, see, that gets me. I thought you were going to say it was a car, and usually <laughs> I go, ah, I can get rid of that. But a guitar, that's that's tough for a musician. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it, it was worth the sacrifice. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Remembering the why, and mm-hmm. for me, the why was that there was a time in my life where I was so afraid and nervous and anxious and felt like I was drowning in debt, and I don't ever want to go back there again, and I know there's people out there that feel that way right now, mm-hmm. and I just want to reach a hand out to them and let them know you can do it, and um, we led our first FPU class this year. Wow, We thank even you. sponsored a couple. We were able to do that. Neat. They were in the middle of an emergency when they started, so... Yeah. Um, it just feels so good to be able to give back. That's the whole reason. That's yeah. the whole goal. And actually, even more important than that, we met God on the way, climbing out of our debt. So Very cool. Yeah, wow. that's great. Yep. And we owe it all to you. Very cool. <laughs> We're proud of you. That's awesome. That's the best part of the story right sure. there. Amen. Yep. Excellent. Excellent yep. stuff. Amazing. Cool. So you're attending a good church now. We, we are. are. What's we are. the name? What's the name of the church? Uh, Fairhaven Church, in Rootstown, Ohio. Neat. Yep. Very neat. Very good, cool. good job. Good yep. job. And all because of a hot water heater. Amen. <laughs> all because of a silly hot water tank. God works yep. in mysterious ways. <laughs> he does. Wow. I like it. That's great. Uh, Did the kids get involved? Absolutely. They each have their uh, give, save, spend envelopes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joey owns his own lawn care business and was able to buy his first car all by himself. Go, so. Joey! Wow. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> uh, does what, he provide what did he get? You? What kind of car? An Alexis IS 250. Whoa. It's old and used, but hey. Not got a bad, lot of miles. Though. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, still, that's, a, that's That car's got a cool factor, though. That's a good car. Very cool. And uh, d- does he provide free lawn care for you? That's the real question. <laughs> <laughs> now that your mower's busted. We come last. We're <laughs> last. Oh, he's your final customer. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. You guys are heroes. Way to go. Yeah, excellent job. Excellent job. Okay. So the thing you wanted to make sure of is tell people they can do it, that there is hope. Um, talk about the toughest moment in this whole process. Where was the toughest moment? The toughest moment for me was before we started, was at the beginning, okay. like not that, even knowing that so we could So every do day it. got a little better after once, oh you, once you took control of it. Once we sat down and did a budget together, it was just relief. Yeah. Like we had a plan and we enjoyed our budget meetings. We did it weekly. Mm-hmm. Every Friday night was a win for us. Mm-hmm. And every, every time that we had a victory, every time we paid off a loan, it was a celebration. Mm-hmm. And that motivated us. It kept us motivated. Very good. Yeah, and, and you know, you talk about um, uh, feeling like you gave yourself a raise. Mm-hmm. You really do. It's amazing when you start um, putting your money to work for you and you being the boss of it rather than, you know, it being the boss of you, um, how you can develop this or, or gain this traction around, um, you know, trying to get out of it. Yeah, that's very cool. All right, now you're leading a financial peace class. People here, you paid off 76000 bucks. And they say, well, how'd you do that? What do you tell them the main couple things they need to do is? Well, I, well you know, like she said, for, for, for me, I, I think the biggest thing is remembering your why. Mm-hmm. Remembering the, the hot water tank that, that took a crap on you and mm-hmm. trying to, you know, um, make it right for not only the moment that you're in, but also the long-term outcome for you and your family. Um, and, and then I think self-denial or denying yourself, you know. Discipline. Um, Discipline, mm-hmm. yes. Discipline is, mm-hmm. is the perfect word for yeah. it. Uh, everyone around us has brand new cars. Ours are 15 years old. So, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, just discipline. Yeah, right. but you're free. We are free. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How's it feel? Beautiful. Wonderful. Unbelievable. We're proud of you. You guys are amazing. Thank very, you. very well done. Good Thank words. You. Good words. A lot, of, a lot of people inspired by your story. Heroes. Absolute <laughs> heroes. Very well done. Got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story. You're on your way. How ordinary people build extraordinary wealth. How you can too. And uh, a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody. Uh, sure. You're going to run into somebody this week, probably. Uh, and we'll go ahead and give you a one-year subscription to our membership to Financial Peace University. And you'll be able to give scholarship somebody in the next class that way. If you very want. That's cool. fun. Yeah, good thank stuff. That's yeah, thanks fair. for leading the class. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. We appreciate that. Very, very good. Yeah, you'll be changing some people's lives by doing that. It's important, important stuff. You guys are impressive. 
Very well done. All right, so Joseph and Lexi are how old? 16 and 12. All right, very cool. Very well done, you guys. All right, John and Joy, Joseph and Lexi, Akron, Ohio. $76,000 paid off in three years, making 100 to 160. Met God on the journey. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt free. Yeah. Woo! That's how it's done. He counted that down like a band leader. That you was seen? amazing. <laughs> They've been practicing. Good stuff. That's Good changing stuff. the family tree. The kid's buying his car with cash. He's starting his own business. He's catching on to this thing. Rock stars, man. This is the Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, Psalm 139, 16, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Bill's in Green Bay. Hi, Bill. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, so my wife and I are always looking for the most worthwhile places to donate money. And we currently donate to our church and a couple of other organizations, but we, we're we looking to make a bigger impact for a family. And we decided we'd like to donate money to a couple that we know to help them pay for college for their 14-year-old when she goes to college in a few years. And now we're friends with this couple, but not extremely close. And we feel that this is an excellent place to donate money and have a big impact. The child is, has extreme potential. And my question is, number one, what is a good way to sell this idea to them? I know that, well, there are no absolutely no strings attached, and we aren't looking for any recognition, but I've realized this has a potential to seem off-putting if we approach it in the wrong way. And number two, if we do go through with this, what is the best way to go about it? Uh, would we just give them a check so they can open a 529 plan or open one ourselves? Are there any tax implications associated with this? Yeah. What a big heart, Bill. Way to go, man. That's awesome. Thank you. So how much money are we talking about donating to this child's college? Uh, 10000 Good for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, what I would do is contact a smart investor pro and um, get everything all set up, but don't open it. Get it ready to go. Select the mutual fund. Okay. Figure out the 529 plan. Get everything set up. Uh, you will. I, if I were in your shoes, I would list the parents as the custodian of the money, which means they're in charge of the money. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I would uh, take them to dinner. And okay. just sit down and go, okay, this is a little weird. This is a, just, you know, the best way to keep something that's awkward from being super awkward is just say it's awkward. And that kind of takes the awkward <laughs> power away, right? Uh, yes. And just go, this is strange. I've never done anything like this. I, it, I know if I do this wrong, it could be off-putting. And just say the exact same things you just said to me. And unless these people are psychotic... They're not going to be put off. They're just going to go, wow, we are so grateful. Thank you so much for that. You didn't have to do that. I mean, do you know about their financial situation? 
Uh, slightly. Um, I, I think that this this would be um, very grateful. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. because it's for the child and for college. It feels different than, hey, you guys are broke. Here's some money to be less broke. This yeah. feels like you care about this child and their future, and you're investing. I mean, into that. Let me tell you, as a parent, um, it's hard to not like someone that's doing something nice for your kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're mad at generosity, especially for for their child. That's a that's a oof. weird thing. But I mean, yeah, you you know, I, and I think I would just couch it and say, listen, there's no strings attached. Uh, I've got it all set up. You will be in charge of the account as the custodian. I have not made the deposit and done the final stroke on the paperwork yet, but it's all set up with a smart vester pro from Ram, you know, one of the people Ramsey recommends and, uh, it's $10,000. It'll be in a mutual fund. And, uh, then you're in charge of it and we're going to hand the paperwork over to you and we're going to walk away and it's going to be under your control. And, uh, I've got lots of suggestions and lots of ideas, but none of those are part of this deal. Okay. That, that sounds good. I, I appreciate that. I've had a great deal of anxiety about how to approach this. I, you know, just say that out loud. And you know what? They'll okay. go, yeah, I kind of understand because it's not like we're best friends. It's not like we're family members. Uh, this is a little weird, but it's wonderful weird. <laughs> Well, oh, thank you. That's good to hear. Yeah. And that's, I, I think when you say that out loud, then everybody's not sitting around going, okay, why does this feel strange to me? And no one's acting like it's strange, you know, because it, it is strange, mm-hmm. but it's a wonderful strange. So, but it, it takes the, the, all the awkwardness and the anxiety and all that stuff goes away as soon as you say it out loud. It, yes. I, that, that sounds right. I hadn't thought of it that way, but that does make sense. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the call, man. We appreciate you That's joining us. That's the point us. of these the baby steps. And thanks for being Bill. This kind of generosity. Love Everybody it. ought to be Bill. I mean, there, there you go. Live like no one else so later you can put $10,000 in an account for a kid that's got big potential that you sort of know. Wow. I love it. That's called generosity right there, boys and girls. That's a big-time move. That, that's, a, that's a pro hack right that's there, That's inspiring. It makes me want to do that one day. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Very, very good stuff. Yeah, anytime you're having money conversations or any other conversation for that matter that's awkward. Um, when my kids were teenagers, there was a thing they would do like awkward turtle. You oh, know? I remember that. Remember that? Yeah. And I, and they would just go, okay, awkward turtle. And this this is awkward conversation. It just gives and, you permission. Um, like a turtle that's upside down, can't get over. I don't even know how they did their hands, but it was like something like that. And um, yeah, and it was golly. Wow. But I mean, it does. It's just like, okay, this is. Just our, diffuse our, the tension. Or sometimes, you know, we're teaching leaders to do, uh, the, to sit with someone where there's going to be a, a difficult conversation, how to have difficult conversations. And one of the best things you can do when you're having a difficult conversation with a team member and you're saying, as their leader, you're going, hey, this is going to be a difficult conversation. Get ready. Here we go. And all of a sudden, it's a little bit less difficult. There's still some hard truth. There's still some things that have to change for you to get to st- stay working here. There's still, you know, we're still going to have to be have some clarity and have to have some change in behaviors or whatever it is. But you're going to know, and you're not getting fired today, And but this is going to be tough. So, you know, buckle in there, buttercup. Here we go. And no confusion. all of a sudden, it takes some of the weirdness out of the air on those types of things. Brian is with us. Brian is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hi, Brian. How are you? Hey, great, guys. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Uh, my wife and I are in the process of looking for a new house to buy. I'm just trying to figure out how much house we can afford. Um, we make about 40 a year. We clear about 7500 a month. We own a house currently that we owe fifty-seven thousand on. Could probably sell it in uh, around one eighty. House we to for one ninety in our neighborhood, but it's just the numbers I'm going off of. We okay. don't have any other debt. Good. Okay. I wouldn't want your payment. We teach. Okay. You can qualify for a lot more than we're going to tell you to do. Right. But we have some conservative guidelines, George. Yeah. So we're looking at fifteen-year fixed-rate mortgage and a, no more than a quarter of your take-home pay. And then you can decide right. how much down payment that is. Uh, obviously, I want you to put down as much as possible and get a reasonable house. So once you start... Yeah, whatever the number numbers, is that the loan qualifies for based on that, and the rates are probably 
what, four and three quarter or something like that on a 15 year? Yeah, on a 15 year fixture, you're yeah. looking probably close to five at this point. Yeah. And so, you know, plus you got 120,000 bucks coming out of this house, right? Yes. So right. what kind yeah. of house are you looking to get? Have you done the research in your area of what you'd... Yeah, we, yeah we've done a little bit. Um, the houses are going for around like 350 That's probably, I'm thinking, the top of our budget or, or too much, but that's kind of things we're looking at just for an upgrade. We're just looking to house. We don't want to make a lateral move to a nicer neighborhood to the same size house. We you want said your take-home pay outward. is 7500 Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're looking yeah. at 1875 would be kind of your top limit. So I'm just crunching numbers right. here, and I'm going, okay, well, eighteen seventy-five. You'd probably need to put down one hundred eighty grand on a three hundred fifty thousand dollars home in order to do this, and uh, have it not so be too much. That means your world. you're probably buying a three hundred twenty thousand dollars house instead of a, well, based on the numbers we got here, something like that. So we adjust our expectations, or yeah. we save longer. Yeah, give or take a little bit, because you got one hundred twenty to put down out of your house. Unless you got some other monies to put with it, you might have. But again, a fourth of your take-home pay in payment on a 15-year fixed. And that keeps you from having bit off so much house that you can't fool around and get it paid off. We want the margin in your budget so you can get it done. Good hour, George. Well done. Thanks, Dave. Well done, Kelly, Andrew, Zach, Ben, Austin, all the team in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from the Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube.